I'm Thomas Finn. I'm the chief of police in Boulder City, Nevada. Okay. And in Boulder City, Nevada, do you have issues with animals that are loose in a vehicle, um, a problem at an accident scene? Tell us about it. We do. In fact, about a month ago, we had a crash that I responded to. I was on my way home from work. I just left the office, and uh, it was a rollover crash. The driver was drunk. It was a couple in the vehicle. It rolled probably 10 or 15 times into the desert, and the, the wife was ejected and was killed instantly. The husband was seatbelted in. But the severity of the crash was such that I don't believe he survived. He was in the hospital in bad shape for a long time. But what bothered me the most when I got to the scene, while looking at all the debris over the course of probably 300 yards into the desert, I found their family cat sitting on the shoulder. It couldn't move. It was paralyzed, and it was just moving its head side to side. It was obviously in a lot of pain, a lot of agony, and the head was somewhat deformed, indicating that it had suffered severe injuries. And so we had to call animal control out to euthanize the cat. And that bothered me, and I, this is the first time I'm saying this publicly, that bothered me more than, than seeing the wife killed or the husband severely injured because the cat was an innocent victim, didn't deserve it. Had that cat been uh, restrained in some way, in, in, a, in some sort of a container, would it have had a chance? Ironically, I believe it would have, but ironically there was a container in the vehicle that the cat was not in. It must have been on the lap of one of the occupants, but uh, they weren't using it at the time of the crash, so the cat did not survive. And, you know, I hear these stories about, you know, um, dogs sitting in the front seat. You know, they, police tell us to put our children in the back seat and make sure they're secured because the airbags can kill them on impact, yet people put their pets in the front seat. You see that? I do, and people don't, apparently did not pay attention in their physics classes when they, if, if they truly understood the forces that are at, at, at play when a, a crash occurs, particularly a severe head-on or into a fixed object, there's no way even a, you can hold on to a small animal if it's on your lap. And unfortunately, we see the consequences of, of those, um, the misinformation that people get when they think that they can hold on to an animal in a crash. And, and so it's, a, it's an issue of safety for the animal. Uh, and for the people in the car, but it's also an issue of safety for first responders. It is. It really is. Because animals, when they're severely injured, uh, they've been known to, to bite officers and bite emergency responders. And all we want to do is, is comfort them and, and get, them, get them the help that they need. But oftentimes we suffer the consequences of somebody else's um, failure to properly secure the, their animals. And if they get out of a vehicle or ejected from a vehicle on a crash on the highway, what can happen next? Well, now you have cars that are swerving to avoid striking them, and, and perhaps you'll have a secondary accident, or it could be as bad, if not worse, than the, the original one. So, uh, Bark Buckle Up, what, what this is all about is, is really informing people about, about these safety issues and making suggestions on what kinds of restraints that they might use for their animals since people do travel with their animals. They're part of the family now. That's right. What do you think about this idea? I think it's a great idea. Um, when I traveled with, with my pets when I, years ago when I had a family, um, we'd keep them in a, in a crate in the back of the vehicle, You typically in the back seat, and loop the seat belt through it and one of the lap belts just to hold on to it. But this is a great idea. I don't know why it hasn't been thought of before. And you think with the popularity of pets, I mean, so many people love their pets and treat them like their children, sure. that that would be something they'd want to do, right? You would. You know, some of the, the, harshest, rec the harshest recollections I have in, in this career of mine, in 28 years of being a cop, is of loved ones, survivors in a crash, seeing their, their cat or their dog or their rabbit, whatever they were carrying in the vehicle with them dead in the vehicle or thrown out of the vehicle as a result of the crash. And I mean, they're as traumatized by that, if not more so, than, than the fact that they were in a severe crash.